What's up? Today on Rune Revival, we want to know what you think. Should a syllabic consonant be written with a single rune? Here you see the chart of Anglo-Saxon runes and their respective consonant sounds in IPA for Modern English. These are the four which can be syllabic consonants. That is, a consonant which forms a syllable in itself. For example, the m at the end of rhythm. There is technically a fifth, but we'll cover that in a moment. Let's start with the easiest one. The rune man says m as a syllabic consonant that may be found in algorithm, aneurysms, blossom, bottom, schism, and wisdom. Depending on your accent, it may not appear in all of those words, but you should still be able to see how it could appear. What other examples can you think of? Write them below. In the lower left, you can see the words rhythm and rhythmic with their IPA transcriptions. In the lower right, you can see how those words are spelt in the Shavian script, along with the IPA transcription of the Shavian text. Now you might wonder, why are we including Shavian in a video about runes? Apart from the great support that the Shavian community has been to us throughout this journey, it's because the Shavian community has explicitly rejected syllabic consonants. As you can see in the word rhythm, they write their symbol that is equivalent to the schwa before a syllabic consonant in order to indicate that that consonant is syllabic. However, that does mean that it is not possible to distinguish between a syllabic consonant and when that consonant is preceded by a schwa. You will also notice that the schwa disappears in rhythmic, that is, when a suffix is added. But in the actual IPA transcription on the left, there is no change. The syllabic m simply becomes the first character at the start of the mic syllable of rhythmic. Of all the syllabic consonants in English, this one is the easiest to spot in Latin script because it is frequently transcribed as a syllabic consonant. The other nasal syllabic consonant is n, as in button, even, frighten, garden, nation, newton, or vision. Now you may notice that in some of those cases, such as fright n or guard n, the position of the syllable break may have changed. So, for example, you may say fry ten or guard den rather than fright n and guard den. Would that change whether you think this sound should be written just with the rune need or with ethyl need? As for the shun and jun suffixes of nation and vision, I have long been an advocate of including a syllabic n at the end of those because they are quite common word parts and it would help us all save a lot of time writing. Before we move on to the main example, you may notice that just under need in the upper right, I put the phrase broken key. That's an example of where the fifth syllabic consonant may appear. That is syllabic eng. Like how the word pink is actually pronounced as the word ping followed by k rather than pin followed by k, so too when n falls at the end of a word, it can morph into the ng sound. Thus, broke n key can end up sounding like broke n key. However, because that only happens before k, I would recommend treating the word broken just as a single word and not changing its spelling just because of this accidental change in speech. In the bottom left, you see the words mason and masonry. I know that in some accents that's said more like mason and masonry. However, we're not looking at the s, -s sounds for this. We're looking at the n. So let's not argue about that, okay? In the Shavian text, you can see that they've included the schwa not only before the n in mason, but also after the n in masonry. 
So they appear to have it as masonry. That's in spite of the fact that everyone says it as masonry. No one says it as masonry. Now some of you might be thinking, the N here is technically not syllabic because it's not on its own. The syllable is sin. But do you actually use a vowel there, or do you go straight from s to n? If we were to allow a syllabic consonant in a word like even, should we also allow it in a word like mason? Would writing seal need at the end of a word cause it to be confused with the sn sound at the beginning of a word like snail? Or does its position in the word make it sufficiently clear how it should be pronounced in context? After all, all of the other runes do technically make more than one sound, but nobody is asking to distinguish the aspirated p in pots from the unaspirated p in spin, or the frequently muted p at the end of stop. The point of choosing mason and masonry as the example words is to show how, if we begin adding extra schwas where they don't appear, it can result in situations like the Shavian spelling of masonry, where we end up producing silent characters that no one pronounces. Now, if we're never saying them at all, why would we write them? Syllabic all is not too difficult to spot in Latin script because it is frequently written as LE. However, that's not always the case, as you can see in bagel and postal. But it is in bottle, castle, cattle, handle, and whistle, as well as our example word of bubble. It is typically a dark L, all, but when a suffix is added, it can frequently change into a clear L, bubbling, bubbler. Now in the Shavian spelling in the top right, they add a schwa in bubble, it disappears in bubbling, but then it's back again in bubbler, which they also write rhotically. So it reads as bubble er. Some voices argue that having characters appear and disappear like this can be confusing for people learning to read. Nonetheless, as that happens in speech in some words anyway, they generally tolerate it to some extent nonetheless. What are your views on that debate? I've previously expressed my reservations about using lagu as a syllabic consonant because transcriptions such as bjork lagu could be read as bl rather than bull. But in a word like bubbling, the bub all becomes a bub bl ing anyway. So, is that really a problem? Another example I've given before is the word people. If you pronounce that as people, you may be confused for a moment, but if you read it in context, would you really be confused by that? Is this a feature of our language that needs to be distinguished in writing? Or is it something that readers need to learn to recognize and decipher? Now for the hard one. Syllabic R. Syllabic er. I have previously expressed my opposition to using it because of certain confusions that can arise. In the recent vowels videos, I suggested writing the sound at the end of the words wander, father, and letter as ethel double rad. But some of you pointed out to me how that is inconsistent with how other words in the Form 2 column behave. I'll come back to that issue in a moment. First, let's look at wander and wandering. Now in my accent, I not only drop the schwa in wandering, but the d morphs into a j. So I say wandering rather than wandering. A similar thing happens in how the word prefer changes into preference, with the vowel after the F being completely dropped. 
there could be some debate about whether bluster becomes blustery or blustery, but in the word history, it's pretty clear that the O has been completely silenced. You'll note here that these R's aren't actually syllabic. I'm more just giving you some examples of words where the vowels have been silenced because of the presence of the er. The word particular is an unusual example. In the British pronunciation, both the first AR and the AR at the end are shortened into schwas. However, in many American accents, they are themselves an er sound. So it's per lur without a vowel. This is but one of many examples where the schwa can interchange with er. In the case of particular, most of us would probably be happy enough seeing the first ar written as the nurse vowel, ethelrad, but what do we do about the last one? Runes typically don't show which syllable is emphasized, and that's never been done in English writing anyway. But seeing particular with the nurse vowel in both cases might look a little odd. Seeing particular wouldn't look as bad. It would just look as though the writer were emphasizing the first syllable for some reason. But the last syllable of particular is the same as the letter vowel. The point of all this being that whereas rhotic speakers tend to use syllabic er, non-rhotic speakers tend to reduce the sound to a schwa. But even non-rhotic speakers restore the er when a suffix is added in words like wandering. In light of that, I have a proposal. We're all happy using ethyl for the comma vowel. A recent video on the frequency of phonemes in different lexical sets showed that ethyl rad is clearly the best option for the nurse vowel, so those two need no further discussion. But when it comes to form two, marry, murray, mary, mirror, and morrow all have a syllable break immediately after the first form vowel and before er, whereas letter does not follow that rule. A word that does is array. So what if we were to use double rad to indicate that there was a syllable break before the er after a short vowel? Then Accents which say morrow as moro using the thought vowel could still merge it into the thought vowel because they're using the form 3 form of the vowel rather than form 1. This would also apply to the merry mary merger and the serious serious merger, otherwise known as the mirror nearer merger. If we follow that rule, then using a syllabic rad for the letter vowel becomes less problematic. Non-rhotic accents would just be using the comma vowel, that is ethyl or the schwa, in place of that syllabic er. To some extent, though unwittingly, I have already been encouraging doing this with the words cure, hour, and fire. In the middle of this screen, you can see a list of IPA symbols for R-colored vowels according to what is fairly standard across different English dialects. Note that vowel length is not shown here. If you have any questions about those, please leave them below. On the right, you can see some more extreme examples of where multiple consonants may occur without a vowel. In national, we already have the seal chain digraph for the sh sound, then it's immediately followed by n and dark all, leaving us with the four runes seal chain need lagu. Would having that combination there be too confusing for readers? Next is visionary, as opposed to visionary, as some might say it. Remember that elk's chain as a digraph makes the j sound of genre. The syllable break in literal could be either before or after the T, as in literal, 
or lit rule. Does allowing for syllabic consonants in this case make it easier to understand across dialects, given how there's less variation? Veteran or veteran follows a similar pattern. In these cases, I'm thinking that the tier-rad combination doesn't cause a problem because we would ordinarily expect that combination to be followed by a vowel. If it's not, it makes sense that the consonant should be syllabic, or at least carrying a schwa before it. If we look back at the vowels chart, it would now look like this. You'll see we have made some other changes. For example, we've made the arm and courier vowels full size. If you have them merged with other vowels anyway, you know that you don't need to use them, but we'll talk about how those mergers work in another video. In light of viewer feedback, we've added a form 2 of group 4. Uh, the word erect apparently in some dialects is said using the happy vowel followed by er as distinct from both mirror and weary. In those accents, the word erase or raise is also said similarly. However, we went with erect because nobody's going to argue about how to pronounce the end of that word. As you can see, this results in a situation where the long form of group 3 is the same as er. The only exception to that being those accents where beard is said distinctly from both the nurse vowel and the vowel in beard. So in effect, er has become the double bind rune form of ease. What do you think of how the table looks as a whole now? Are we ready to move on to mergers within the same form? The word trap we've respelled with the rune chain at the start because most of us in Britain, America, and here in Australia are all using the voiceless post alveolar non syllabant affricative, and thus, rather than sounding like t rap, the word sounds more like ch rap, trap. Over on the right, we've changed the conditions for form two. The condition that was the second condition is now the first condition. That is, the vowel sounds the same as its equivalent form one. So if that condition is not met, then you can automatically merge this sound to another form. The second condition is now the er is not the final sound in the root word. Now it's up to you to tell us. Is that the key factor that's making the difference in regards to when rad needs to be doubled? This would result in a small ambiguity in regards to the Mary 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 merger. Those who merge the group 8 word Mary with Mary, the lady's name, would write both using the square vowel whereas those who merge the two group five vowels would end up writing it with double rad because they're unable to tell the lady's name Mary apart from the word Mary, as in Merry Christmas.